Flower folks, welcome to Share Inspirations. In today's video, I'm going to be taking you through my cutting garden and the greenhouse and sharing with you what all is blooming here in January. I am currently cutting my first harvest of daffodils. These daffodils bloom for me faithfully in January to February every year, and I've had these in the garden for the last three years. <clears throat> now, I am in Southern California, high desert zone 8B, hence the reason why my daffodils bloom so early. So if you are in warmer areas, you will notice the daffodils do bloom early for us because by March, um, warmer temperatures start to set in and um, it, our spring is very short here in the desert. So currently I am harvesting two uh, flowers from the daffodils. This bud form one is going to open up and last anywhere from five to seven days and the other one that I had cut earlier is probably going to give me about three to five days. Something to note about daffodils is you want to put them in water for at least four hours before you plant, uh, place them with other flowers, otherwise the, the um, uh, silky chemical that comes out of the uh, daffodils is going to kill the other flowers. Here we are in my greenhouse. All of this that you see here is um, honeywort plants that haven't uh, budded yet, but they should be anywhere from an, about a month or so, and they're growing very well. I sowed them in September of 2019. Up there, I have Queen's Anne's Lace that is trying to grow out of the garden. <laughs> Here we have pansies. I got the seed packet of these from Walmart for 20 cents and I sowed them in here last week of September and we are now last week of January so four months give or take. These at the stage that I'm cutting them will give me anywhere from three to five days. The temperature in my greenhouse doesn't uh, doesn't go above I'm sorry, it doesn't go below 35 degrees and I have a thermometer and a humidity um, humidity calculator in here that is the thermometer and the humidity measure thing at the same time. I'll go ahead and leave a link to uh, that on Amazon. I got that for just ten dollars and it's a wonderful tool to have for your greenhouse. Um, in my greenhouse I also have Queen's Anne's lace as you see here along with a lot of coleus. Now this coleus that you see growing like a jungle in the greenhouse, I have had this. Um, I direct seeded these in October of 2018, so over a year ago. And um, they were very little, started growing very slow because uh, when I sowed them in October, November settled in with very cold weather. Uh, whenever I start seeing them start to look a little bit sad like they are, I would just topple them off and let them grow uh, as the summer sets in they take off again and it's a wonderful plant to have in there for humidities level. This um, Queen's Anne's lace flowers have a phenomenal vase life. They last anywhere from 10 to 15 days. These guys here, I'm not sure what they are since I don't remember sewing them. I thought they were pincushion flowers uh, because that's what the seed packet said when I sewed them, but they don't look like um, pincushion flowers. So I'm not sure if I got a wrong seed from someone um, from my food seed exchange groups and I sewed it thinking it was pincushion flowers because that's what it was labeled. Here we have a Celosia coxcomb variety, the brain flower also called. This is the last flower from the uh, harvest that I showed, from the uh, blooms that I showed you in November on my tour of the greenhouse. This has a beautiful texture, beautiful hard texture, and these flowers last forever in the vase. Of course, if you wanna dry them, you have that option, but they last anywhere from 10 to 15 days in the vase. Here I have some coleus flowers and leaves to be used as foliage in my bouquet that I'm going to make. This variety is called rainbow coleus and these last forever. They even start rooting in the water. Um, when I leave them in for bouquets, I notice about 10 days later they all start growing roots. So if I wanted to, I could just keep growing the roots and transplant the plant outdoors in the summertime. But because I have such a 
um, <laughs> such a stock, I don't do that. Here I have some, I've cut the Queen Anne's lace that was trying to grow out of my greenhouse. So some stems are shorter, other stems are tall, and that's fine, I'll, I'll work with them in uh, different vases. And again, these will last forever in the vase. Of course, if you wanna dry them, that's also an option. Here is a sunflower bud that I'm so excited about. These are sunflowers that I pinched in my greenhouse and instead of growing six foot tall, they stayed four foot, four and a half foot. And this one should be opening in about two weeks, 10 days perhaps. I wanted to share that. It's, um, it's a very exciting thing. This is the first time I've actually successfully gotten sunflowers to bud inside of a greenhouse. And here is the finished bouquet. I have pansies, I have um, coxcomb celosia, Queen's Anne's lace, coleus in here, and also the, the um, questionable plant that I thought was pincushion plant, but isn't pincushion plant, or forget-me-not. Um, this arrangement came out very well from what I was hoping that it would turn out. It turned out much better than that. I have it all in a blue vase and it is a January arrangement. I'm so blessed to have an arrangement like this in January because you know, everything is cold, um, but I'm grateful to have had a greenhouse and grow everything in the greenhouse because as you saw, most of this was harvested from the greenhouse. I hope you enjoyed the video guys and I will see you in the next one. Bye.